Yep. Oh! Oh! <laughs> Drearing. Off you go, big fella. That is crazy adrenaline. Yes! Oh, it's a big one. Oh, it's got me in there too. Oh, yeah, I got it. I got it out. Yes, big red one. You beauty. <laughs> right. Uh, I'll just, I'll lift it in. Oh, yeah. Look at this. Yes. That's what we want. Yes! Oh, grabbed off the top. It's a good fish too. Oh, come here, big fella. Great big jack. Oh, wait for this. Taking in the shallows. <sighs> big boils. Oh, get up here. I hope you saw that. Look at the size of this thing. It's a monster. And it's all about that subtle presentation. You wait till you see what's hanging out of its mouth, if I can get it in. Oh, it's a beautiful, beautiful big fish. And I'm fishing in the quietest of creeks. <laughs> Not anymore. <laughs> but this monster has just jumped all over this bolt. Fished weedless so I can get right in amongst these snags. Oh, what a beauty. Have a look at that, would you? He's probably just on that 500. I hope you can see there's the lure that's done it. Oh, what a beautiful fish. Just skipped into the shallows there. I know there's all these mullet getting thrown up onto the shallows. I knew there'd be a jack sitting up in there. Oh, awesome fishing. I'll just get this out of his gob and get him straight back in. There it is, just fish weedless. Beautiful, beautiful fish. Take a look at that, would ya? Oh, back you go, fella. Really early morning. I've barely woken up myself. It's all happening now, though. <laughs> Got a face full of water. I think it's all over the camera as well, but... God, that's... Jack just belted it right off the end of that log. Oh, Go running for it. Happy. Welcome back to another My Lure Box video. In this video, I'm going to talk to you about skip casting plastics for mangrove jack. The time is now to get into your skip casting and start to hone those casting skills. It's uh, the early season stuff that for me where it really gets exciting because um, the jacks tend to try and find that really warm water so if you're getting into you know small areas of creeks or areas where there's a lake that heats up over the day and then water pushes in late afternoon up into a little creek they can be the little hot pots that really turn the jacks on and it's one of my favorite if not my absolute most favorite way of chasing mangrove jack is to skip little shad style lures deep in hard up against cover using a little weedless worm hook that's got a weight on it 
and I'm going to take you through how to rig these things, what sort of gear you need, and some of the luring options, as well as some ta like tactics on how to do it and what to look for, where to throw your lure, getting really specific in where to place your lure and how to retrieve it around those covers, just to get your catch rates up. So hopefully, if you haven't got into your skip casting yet, this might be the video that kicks you in the right direction and gets you started for the season. It takes a little while to get into it and to, um, to get your casting accuracy down and that sort of thing, especially if you're using a bait caster. I've got videos on this channel on skip casting 101, how to skip cast, learn to skip cast, uh, so if you're looking for more information on this, I'll link some of those videos in the description at the end of this video um, and down in the description below. What I'll do, I'll start with the gear and then I'll take you for a trip up this little creek and talk to you about the tactics and show you the way that I like to do it. So, just sit us in the right spot so we're not going to run into these trees. It's, in, it's super heavy cover in here. There's overhanging mangrove trees, there's tea trees, there's eucalypts. Um, cotton trees, everything just hanging over into these little systems and that's where you want to place yourself when you skip casting. You can do it around docks and pontoons and things like that around bridges and stuff but it's, it's in here where I, I think the most action happens. Where you pushed up, there's a lot of bait that scoots in and around all this heavy cover and that's what you're trying to imitate. So I'll show you some of the, uh, the lure options actually. I'll start with lure options and then we'll get into the rig and the type of gear that we're using. So on there is a four inch eco gear bolt and they're one of my favorite skip casting lures. They just sit perfectly on a little 4.0 uh, EWG weedless worm hook. And the reason I like these is their big paddle tail. So you want something with an action that kicks into gear straight away. The moment you start retrieving this thing, in against the cover, it's swimming hard for you. And then it's got sort of like a fairly flat profile which helps with its skip casting. So you can skim in like a rock in hard up against these covers underneath overhanging trees, tight in under logs that are just you know peeking out of the water, that sort of thing. And then I just run a twist lock at the front of that to keep the plastic in, in position. So you might be able to see that little bit of wire loop there, that's a twist lock. And uh, they're fantastic for, for rigging. Uh, the, the hooks that I'm using, these are out of a Savage Gear Manic Shrimp. I think it's the five inch Manic Shrimp and I love those, they've got a weight forward system. You can get sort of weight back systems, they're not, they're not as effective for me with the skip casting. You want something forward that pushes the bait through the air like that. Really balanced as it tri uh, you know, flies in against cover and underneath stuff, that just helps with your skip casting. And if you're new to skip casting, unweighted is probably the way to go. Um, and using like, I don't know, like a Finesse Frogs by Z-Man. That floats and so you won't be getting hooked up when you're getting overruns and and having to pick things out of your reel and fix things up when you when you're just learning your bait casting. You can do it with spinning outfits, and I've got videos on how to do that as well. But uh, what we'll do, I'll show you some of the other luring options. These are another favourite of mine, the Flash J Shads. There you go, Flash J Shads by Fish Arrow, the four and a half inch. They now come in a four, I think, as well, which I'm pretty excited to use those this season. This season. And again, another big paddle tail. They've got a holographic foil on the inside of them, which is one of the only baits that have got that. Beautiful big eye as a presence and a, and a uh, scale pattern. I'll get one out so you can have a proper look. Well, take a look at that. Big paddle tail. Yep, beautiful finish on them. You know, like a gill, a gill plate, everything, that holographic foil there. And then they've got like a dorsal slit as well so that the weedless worm hook can just be tucked in if you want. If it's in heavy cover, tuck it in. Otherwise, you can cheat a bit and just push the hook point out a little bit so it's exposed already. Um, so they're one of my favourites. There's these things by GT360 GT Coastal, these shrimp. Um, they're good as well. They're a little bit less durable though, so they'll tear up, but they are fantastic, really effective. And Z-Man have got stuff like that. These diesel minnows, if you can rig them on a weedless worm hook, they're hard to find. Or you can use like a snake lock's head up, uh, head set up, snake lock heads. And they're TT, tack, like Tackle Tactics jig heads that run these little four inch, and I like these red shad or the um, calico candy color. Skipping those in can be fantastic. And you can drop them down and, and sit them on the bottom even 
with a lot more success. So they're one of my favorites as well. Um, the new Bait Junkie Jerk Shads, I haven't fished these yet, but I'm excited to give these a go. I've seen some video footage on the way that these things work. They've got a join in them. Take a look at this. And at speed, they, they get a tail action going that I haven't seen yet. So, oh, well, you can see it there. That's pretty good. You can see the join there. It's it's a proper joint, and so the whole bait just sort of does that, and you can run them at speed if you get the weighting right. So I'm going to fish those um, again this season. Try try something different. Often it's a point of difference that, that gets it going for me. So they'll get a go. Um, I fish the smaller stuff from this bait junkie range. It's not as durable as um, you know, say a Z-Man's for example, but they, they do have an action that's really appealing to me from what I've seen in the video. So I'm gonna give that a go and it shows you how to rig them on the back. Um, so they just rough up a little bit from the other ones that I've used. I've got you know stuff like this. You can see I've, I've fished these little grubs pretty hard recently and you'll, you'll notice they sort of rough up a little bit after a bit of heavy working against cover and things like that. Um, but they do work and I've caught plenty of brim on them. All right, so there's some of the some of the lure options. Um, don't underestimate prawn and shrimp presentations. They have to be one of the best. And the guys that fish up north for jacks in around, around the mangroves, a lot of them use those those style of lures. So things like a manic shrimp, um, those akuta prawns, um, the zeric live shrimp, uh, all of those weedless presentations are just fire. And that's that's what you want to be running. So something with a weedless weedless hook like that will get you out of trouble. And then when I was talking earlier about the the rigging system, you want that hook either buried, or if you want to cheat a bit to get a better hook up rate, you can expose it like that. And that means that there's just a little bit more there to bite into the jack when he grabs it. I use 20 pound FC rock, and I can get away with that most of the time. It's very rare that I'll get snapped off but they are the bigger fish. And when you're fishing heavy cover like this, generally the jacks aren't gonna be the 55s and 60s that you might get around the canals and that sort of thing on the Gold Coast. They're more around that sort of 40 mark, but the numbers are better. So this is my favorite style of jack fishing, getting into creeks like this, testing my casting, and uh, getting hopefully some numbers or a bit more interest than what you might if you're punishing yourself around the canals trying to get a big jack off a pontoon. 20 pound, that is as low as I would go in this cover. It's real sporting, you don't get them all out, there's plenty of snap-offs, um, but you probably might go to 30 or 40 if you wanna be pulling fish out. This is the setup that I use for this stuff, and I go into a lot of detail um, on this in other videos that I've got on how to skip cast. And basically it's a low profile bait casting reel. This is a Shimano Corrado 200, and I've got 20 pound braid to my fluorocarbon leader there, about a meter and a half that's tied on with an FG knot. You can see that there, hopefully. That's a little FG. And um, then this little rod, this thing is just fabulous. It's a Shimano Bass Raider 510. It's a three to six kilo um, just bait casting rod and the magic is in the tip. So you can see, hopefully you can see there that it, it's got uh, just a medium action and that allows me the opportunity to load that thing up when I'm casting so that it can generate enough momentum and fling the lure in for skip casting as well. And that's what you need. My, uh, my other bait casting rods for, with hard bodies, they're nothing like this. This is specifically for, for skip casting with that softer tip. Okay, so if you're looking for something in the shops, you want like about a 70-30 with 30% of that rod being fairly soft up top and the 70% I'm talking about at the bottom has a bit more strength to it. And if I'm being really honest, like this is, this is as light as you would go. I struggle to rip jacks out with this thing at times, but it gives me great, great skip casting action. So the first thing really is getting that accurate cast and getting it, being able to get it in. So I can do that with this, but it's probably a little bit light on for, for pulling jacks out of cover. All right. If there's anything I've forgotten, um, just ask me questions and I'll get back to you in the comments of this video. Um, but that's basically it for the stuff. So for the lures and the rigging, that's about it. Uh, you definitely want to have one of these. So like a lure retriever of some co you know, some description. Um, you know, something you can drop down if you're in heavy cover to pull your lure back out. And what else? 
I've got I've got some um, some scent there, so so I still use scent, especially if I've been you know fueling up and things like that. And I use a just one of these, like a hook sharpening stone, all the time because you're just ripping through heavy cover. And then one of these little things which gets out of bait hook because you've got a single hook on this, this can be helpful. Just getting down deep into the jack and carefully removing that single hook if he's deep hooked. Um, insect repellent goes without saying. <laughs> Anytime you jack fishing, because it's crazy mozzies and uh, midges up in these zones. All right, if you've hung around long enough for this video, then I'm gonna just give you some gold for where to cast and, and what to look for the specific spots on what you want to be doing in this part of the video. So we'll get into it. I'll just clear the back of the prop. Yeah, it's just caught up on some sticks and stuff. Okay. All right, so you want the shadows. Like the shadows is where it's at. The jacks, they're very, very light sensitive. So you want to be in the shadows basically all the time. And that includes under a log that's in, in the light. Okay, so under brush that's out exposed in the light. But basically, this lay down here is a perfect example. There's stuff that's really heavily lit out there. I'm looking in here. And so I get right to the base of that lay down and bring the lure over and then drop it down the other side of the, the log. And often that's where you get hit on the drop or as soon as you just kick it back into gear with a little hop hop, out she comes and bang, you get ripped back underneath. So that's what you're looking for. When you've got a lay down, you, you try and get as close into that log as you can and drop it down the side and allow it to get down. So the jack that's sitting underneath the log, they sit under like that, real hard. They can't see it if it's right up above. They'll hear it and know that it's there. The moment it comes into view, it's theirs. So that's how you want to fish those lay downs, right in against the butt of it. Especially if there's, you know, a foot of water between where the log's fallen and the mud. If, it, if there's any gap in there in the shadows, they'll be in there. The other spots you're looking for are these little sort of overhanging curtains of root systems, especially if they're covered and you can fire deep into those overhanging roots. They're fantastic as well. And then, you know, this little section here, like this creek's pure gold. That tree's fallen the other way, right? and you can see the big hole that it's left here. Now, if you see a big hole or a depression in the bank where it goes in like that, and there's no tree on the bank, well, it's out here somewhere. So that's where you want to bring your lure and just slow your retrieve down on the way out because, you know, most of the time, there's going to be a root system out here and then a, a big tree that no one else is fishing because they can't see it. So they're the subtle things that you want to be looking for. And if you've got a log that you can kind of see in the water, there's one there um, that's sort of semi-covered, you know, by the water and then it stops and you've got the end of that log, you want to burn that plastic. And usually it's a medium burn for me to get that tail going and then I just stop it. As soon as I get to the end of that log, bring it out, boom, stop it on the end of the log, they come and grab it from the end of the log. They just race out under the cover of the log, grab it and go back in. And uh, that's why you need your drag set, like ridiculously tight. That's pretty damn tight. As tight as she'll go before she snaps. But any of this stuff is gold, like full brush piles you want to get in there, especially if there's a little bit of tidal flow. drag it over the twiggery stuff just, and then bring it through. You're trying, to, you're trying to send your lure in as deep as you can so they've got as much run and as much vibe to go off as, um, as you can get. So that's why a bigger paddling tail is really, really effective. Um, see if I can show you what's going on here. So there's, there's good shadows right here with this big heavy tree. The jacks will be in the middle of that. So maybe like a, a Z-Man's finesse frogs burnt through the center of that that's on the surface would be really good. Otherwise the water is the water's actually getting squashed and pushed in against that really tight base of it all. 
So if you can get a cast in there, that's that's the go. Draw that. There we go. And you can go up past it and then bring it down. When I get it past the base of the log, I'll just drop it down. And then you can get a little bit jiggy with it, but generally a, a fairly you know medium roll straight back so that they can hone in on it and hear that vibe when they're underneath all that cover and logs. They hear the vibe and sense it, and they they won't miss it. I like the lure to come, you know, just just to go out of out of sight in terms of its depth, and that's why that front weight's so important. It's a it's about a third a, a three eighth of an ounce weight. Okay. Low light conditions are definitely the best, like super early morning, late afternoon. That's without a doubt the best. And then up north, you can you can basically do it all day long. Um, but yeah, down down on the Goldie, South East Queensland, Northern New South Wales, you want those low light periods, um, and then periods where there's a bit of run. If you can if you can match those things up, where there's a fair bit of run in the system, and it's not too full, like you can see here, I can I can fire in underneath that cover there. If it was a full tide, I wouldn't have the gap there. I wouldn't be able to get in there. So as soon as that gap's there and the cover's still um, submerged, that's your, that's your money time. Right. Look at this creek, would you? Oh, it's scary. It's scary stuff. You know, dropping it into the centre like the the boiling pot of the, of the structure and bringing it through and they'll be, they'll be more confident in there than anywhere if you can get it into that stuff and just, you know, even if it's on the surface, if that's the best you can do, you've got to have a go, but stealth is, is a key really, so I'm not, usually I'm not even really talking with mates and that sort of thing, we're just quiet as, um, it's better to be drifting with the tide if you can help it instead of, you know, running a motor. All of that stuff plays into it. And that's probably why I think, for me, using a kayak to do skip casting, um, running a kayak is the most effective way of doing it. If you're in sections like this where you've just got a kilometre or two of, of absolute fire, where you don't have to keep changing spots and motoring. You know, bringing it between like that, you got to do it. If you haven't done it, you got to do it. It's just deadly. The whole skipping thing, that's just with practice. Like, it's a lot skipping a stone. You just want a, a low trajectory rod and that lure just to be flying across the surface. And again, you know, if you're in a kayak, you're lower, so you can get your angle a little bit easier, I reckon. If you're, if you're in a crabbing tinny, like this is just a car topper tinny, you're lower, so you can get a better shot at it. If you're up high in a, you know, in a big five and a half metre thing, it's a little bit more challenging to get that rod angle. You can still do it, but... So those, those lay downs you might be able to pick up that are sitting on an angle coming down in, that's, that's absolute money. So you want to get behind it and bring it past it. You know, hop it over that log there and then sink it down out of sight. And you get like you'll get overruns. I get them. Look at that, like messy stuff. It's frustrating, um, but you you just pull it straight out. You work out how they how they pull out straight away, and it's no no real drama, and certainly worth the stuff. And I am. As the morning progresses and the sun starts to. You know, get higher, the shadows recede. That option of the little four inch diesel minnows, one of those on a snake lock setup, they become probably my go to where you can be fishing those like this. Yeah, I've got one rigged here. 
even though it's a bit dirty now, that's what you want. That little weight there and that weedless hook like that. You can bury it. It's got two dorsal fins and a slit in there. You can bury it in there and they are just the bomb. They're, they're awesome. One of my favourites for jacks. If you want to know some more um, about this skip casting stuff, then make sure you check out some of my skip casting videos. Get out of the road, Mozzie. Um, I've got heaps of stuff on how to skip cast on my YouTube channel. Type in my little box and skip casting and you'll check that out. If you want to see some action of these things absolutely firing, then uh, you need to download my uh, Kayaker's Guide to the Gold Coast video where I just get destroyed with mangrove jack on these things skip casting them in and you'll sort of see the the whole experience if you if you've watched this video to this point again and uh you're really into your skip casting and want to learn the experience is like nothing else and it's kind of like a trance state you get into especially if you get into a rhythm and you're just doing it for a couple of hours you'll forget You'll forget time, you'll forget everything. Your casting becomes on point and it's insane. The experience of being out on the water and doing a skip casting session, I can't recommend it highly enough. And uh, yeah, it'll test you. It'll test your patience. It'll test your casting ability. But if you can get it done, uh, the rewards are on the other side for you. So I hope you give it a go and be patient and keep after it this season. Let me know how you go. And um, yeah, thanks for watching. I hope this helps you fishing this year. I'll see you in the next video.